tell you what, I found my 20s to be a pretty painful time. And I found that to be the case for a lot of people I've spoken to because there's a lot of expectation, there's a lot of unknown, a lot of isolation, and a lot of pressure. And that's not to say that there isn't loneliness and difficulty at most ages in life, which is pretty much what everyone tells you when you're 20. It's kind of part of the problem. Everyone older is always telling you how the stage they're at is so much harder and you're so lucky to be the age you are now and you have your youth and you have your possibility and everything should be great. All these shoulds, the way it should be, the way you should feel. And maybe that's valid, but it's also wildly unhelpful. <laughs> it's probably like the most unhelpful thing you could hear. Um, the point is today, and all days, I am your friend, and we're gonna sit and do a little craft, a little easy therapeutic craft, and we're gonna have a heart to heart. It's gonna be okay. I really didn't start to do this till only like a few years ago, very recently. Treat building your social life, your social world, the same way that you treat working on your nutrition, working on your exercise regimen, all of these things, they're like not that fun in the immediate. It's not super fun. Like I don't like necessarily want to get off the couch and go to the gym right now. However, when I do it for a long time, it starts to pay dividends. But in the immediate, no, it doesn't feel that fun. So when you're thinking you're working on your social life, which like it does take work, I was advised to treat it like a job. I moved to a new city, moved to DC. You're meeting new people. You know, none of them are real connections yet. It's all new, it's all kind of superficial. I've already had an exhausting work week. Kind of the last thing I wanna do on Friday night is go to a party where I don't really have a real connection with anyone and make small talk or not. Like, I would rather not. I would rather almost never do that. But, like going to the gym, like eating well, I'm gonna do it anyway. And the payoff is gonna come later. You're not doing it because it feels fun right now. You're not doing it because you're craving it right now. You're doing it because it's good for you. You're doing it because it's good for your health and it's gonna pay off down the road. When you first start working out, you don't necessarily see the physical changes that you're hoping to see. It comes later, it builds gradually, but it is rather uncomfortable and I would say actually rather exhausting up top. When you're trying to make new connections, you're making the small talk, you're doing the chit chat, you're doing the coffee dates, you're reaching out, you're having the dinner. Like I would much rather be alone on the couch. I'm gonna do it anyway. And the payoff comes later. This video is part of a series that I'm calling, I think, Craft and Cry, where we're gonna do a really simple therapeutic craft and have a heart to heart. Whether you think you're a crafty person or not, doing something repetitive, calm, with your hands, folding laundry, painting a wall, doing a simple craft is a really good way to process giant life problems. There's a lot of science behind it when you get into one of these repetitive tasks. Like when you're folding laundry, your brain, I don't know the science, but your brain is able to make more neural connections. And it's often the moments when people report solving giant life problems, relationship problems, stuff like that. So it's a really good thing to do. Also, you get a fun craft out of it. Here we go. We're gonna be covering this intolerably inspirational notebook. I can't allow this to continue to exist. So we're just gonna cover this in some like design inspo stuff. It's gonna be really fun. Ever heard of fun? Let's do it. Okay, I'm gonna say this. I'm gonna say this and I think it is, maybe some people will object. I don't think it's controversial. I think it's freaking true. With few exceptions, there are a few exceptions, but with few exceptions, I'd say stop trying to make plans too far in advance. I, I find <laughs> it is basically useless to me to make plans more than like three months in advance, to like set a work goal more than like three months down the line, to set a social goal, a relationship goal or whatever, basically more than like three months down the line. Life changes so fast. There's so much new information, new plot points, new feelings, new needs that come up in like three months. I don't really tend to plan farther in advance than that. Of course, there are exceptions. Exceptions include, okay, you have to go to medical school, you gotta go to law school, you gotta, you're gonna have a baby, you're, you wanna buy a house. Like, yes, I understand some things require longer term planning, but you know what I'm saying. More likely than not, 
you are trying to over plan. You are trying to forecast and you're spending time and emotional, mental energy, maybe money. You don't even have all the information yet to be able to plan for the thing that you're going to need done. You don't even have all the information yet. So I would say stop trying to do it. You know, come at me in the comments, but with few exceptions, I mean, do it if you want. I really don't care if you do it with your life. I'm trying to help you. With few exceptions, I would say stop trying to plan too far down the road. Life changes very quickly. You fall in love very quickly. You quit the job quite quickly. You get the new job quite quickly. You get new friends and you move places. People leave. Needs change. Disaster strikes. Miracles strike. Things change very quickly in life. I think I wasted a lot of time and energy and stress and sleepless nights planning how I was gonna fulfill needs that like didn't end up even being my need three months later. I'm gonna just save you some time. And you don't need to do anything constructive with that time. You could order, you could order more Chinese food. You could watch When Harry Met Sally like eight more times. You could draw more. You know, you could call your aunt. Stop doing it. It's a waste of your time. It's a waste of your time. <laughs> is that good advice? I think it is. Easily the biggest lesson, I think that would have saved me a lot of pain in my 20s, was understanding that it's not personal. It's not personal. Whatever the thing, the breakup, friends coming in and out of your life, job rejections, feeling left out, someone canceling last minute. It's just not personal. Everybody is just trying to live their life the best they can. For the most part, people are actually not trying to hurt you. 99% of the time, like yes, there's exceptions out there, but like 99% of the time, people aren't trying to hurt you, they're just trying to live their life. Something that happens for a lot of people in their 20s is they enter a time where there's no longer a built-in community. You're not in college, you're not in high school, uh, maybe you're in a new city. There's no longer a shared community, a shared experience that just kind of builds friendship in. And I often had the feeling that I wanted to cling to people. I was working so hard to keep people in my life. Um, and I was so hurt, so mad, so upset when they left. I would say let people enter and leave your life freely. It's almost never personal. It is almost never about you. You don't have to go down the rabbit hole of figuring out why did they do that to me? Why didn't they invite me to this? Why wasn't I included in that? Why wasn't I enough? It's just not about you. Unfortunately, and fortunately, that is the truth. Everyone else is balancing the same million plates that you are. Trying to find time for family, trying to find time for friends, trying to prioritize obligations, trying to get in the right job. We're all taking care of our worlds the best we can, and it doesn't mean that everyone in our life is gonna be equally taken care of at once. That's just kind of how it works. The more energy you put towards like trying to cling to people, trying to figure out why it happened, or trying to pull them back, the less energy you have at the end of the day to put towards just like building the next step in your life or seeing what door has opened. So I would say a lot of those interactions can feel really hurtful at that age. And also, it's not about you. It almost never is. I will say this. I find it very helpful to this day to keep a really clear image of like the timeline of a human life. Think about your parents. Think about one of your parents or someone older that you look up to. Think about what they were doing at 23. Oh, what's that? You don't know what they were doing at 23? Exactly, because it didn't really matter. Or like maybe it mattered, but like so much happens. So much happens in a lifetime. There's so many, it like, it basically doesn't matter. It basically doesn't matter, which is not to say you don't work hard things, you don't treat people well, and you don't try your best, but it's like when the things are getting you down and you feel like you haven't accomplished a career and you feel like you haven't found the girlfriend or the boyfriend, you haven't accomplished all the goals. Yeah, like nobody has, most people haven't, except for a few people that you're keeping in your mind, a few people who've accomplished things really young that you're comparing yourself to constantly on social media or in real life or whatever. Like. That's not helpful. Keep in your mind the trajectories of the people you actually know. What the heck were they doing? Maybe your parents did a lot at 23. That's annoying of them. But you know, don't think about those ones. <laughs> a million failures and successes throughout the life. That's the human trajectory, is a million 
failures and successes over and over and over. The life looks like this, okay? So, sometimes it helped me a lot to like just refer back to that. Like, what were my parents doing at 23? Not a lot. And nobody cares now what they were doing, really. It doesn't really matter. <laughs> I don't know how much I think that pursuing happiness is necessarily even a doable thing. I feel like happiness is something that like falls on you sometimes, right? But it's not necessarily a state of being. I don't think anyone gets to be happy just their whole life, no matter how well they do life. Instead, something I like to think about is fulfillment. And a, t a, a term I like to use that I've talked about on this channel before is diversifying fulfillment. Diversifying where you get fulfillment in your life. Not putting all your eggs in one fulfillment basket. For example, at certain periods in my life, I was all about my career. All my eggs were in the career basket. The career is what's gonna make me feel good. Or there are times where I was like, all, putting all my eggs in the boyfriend basket. Woof to that basket. Putting all the eggs in the just partying basket. Okay, fine. All of these baskets are like, you know, good enough baskets, but if you have one day when the career isn't your everything, you're gonna feel really terrible. If you have one day where you've, you've been banking on just your social life and just your friends and the thing that makes my life good is my community, friends move away. Friends move away. They will continue to move away for all of your life. They will get families. They will get into relationships. They will find new friend groups. Like it just happens. It's normal. And you will be devastated if that is 100% what you have invested your fulfillment into. The boyfriend, the girlfriend, the friend circle, the family status, the career, they're all gonna have bad days sometimes. They're all gonna have bad days. Sometimes they're gonna fall away completely. And you just wanna have other things there to kind of soften the blow. It's like if you were investing in anything else, you're making financial investments. Would you put all the money in one fucking stock or bond or whatever, I don't really, you know, whatever the financial metaphor is. No, certainly you would not, as far as I understand that metaphor. I don't really understand it, but I think it does the job. Wow, hang on. This video is made possible by Wayfair today, and they've been one of the most beloved sponsors of this channel. You should definitely check out a, an entire show I have on their channel called Iconic Objects. If, you've, if you are a subscriber of my channel and you have not yet checked out Iconic Objects, I don't know what you've been doing. I would definitely go check it out. We do in each episode a deep dive into an iconic design or home decor object that might be found in your home, such as the recliner, the live, laugh, love sign. The episode that just came out is on the disco ball, the history of a disco ball. Why are disco balls having a comeback right now? Why are they popping up all over interiors? and trendy home styles, but why did these trends take off? You're gonna love this show if you're like me and you love an exploratory documentary type series. It takes a look into like the cultural moments throughout the centuries, the decades in America and globally that made these design trends happen. What was happening in the zeitgeist? What was happening psychologically for consumers? Behind each of these objects, there's so much more history and culture than you would ever have guessed. And most often, it's not the story you think it is. I've included a link to the latest episode of Iconic Objects in the description of this video. After you watch this video, you're gonna go over to Wayfair and you're gonna watch Iconic Objects because it's amazing, you're gonna learn, you're gonna grow. Remember to subscribe to the Wayfair YouTube channel. They've got a ton of great content over there, all interior design content. And I would also say it is a fun, silly time. And thanks to Wayfair for sponsoring this video. You probably know it intellectually, but I'm here to remind you, do your best to not completely lose yourself in a romantic relationship. Now, I will say this. I think it's okay to lose yourself a little bit in a romantic relationship because, because falling in love is really rare. Maybe you get to do it once, twice, three times in a life. Like, it's not a ton. It's not a ton. So I do think there's something to like, you're falling in love, soak it up, enjoy it. It doesn't happen that much. Yeah, like disappear a little bit for sure. Become annoying a little bit for sure. Don't just like behave your best while you're falling in love. Like, you know, drop off the face of the earth a little bit. It's so rare, it's so rare. But at the same time, 
Make sure you are at least mechanically going through the motions of staying in touch with your important people, being good to your important people, thinking about them, taking care of them, maintaining your other, your connection points. And that could be your job, it could be a hobby, it could be your exercise routine, it could be your friendships, your family, whatever. Be in love and be annoying, but just, you know, just know, just know that even if you're in love and it lasts forever, you know, the honeymoon phase ends, of course. And hopefully, when you emerge out of it a beautiful butterfly, you still have the connection points there to support your life and, and you wanna be supporting those people too. Okay, you know it, you know, everybody knows it, but no one wants to do it. No one wants to do it. You're not gonna do it, but it's fine. I said it once, so we can move on. One giant pitfall for me personally was that I don't feel that I took ownership of my social life when I was younger. I had excuses. You know, I was, I was very unhappy with my social life and also I was kind of lazy about it. I would say things like, well, I'm an introvert. Well, I'm anxious. Well, I'm depressed. Well, I'm in a city that doesn't suit me that well. Well, I'm in a place that I don't connect with people. Uh, all of those things were like probably true, you know, true, valid to some degree and also, blaming that, blaming those things and pointing to those things as to why I should stay isolated and why I should stay disconnected. I mean, now what? It, it didn't get me any closer to connection. So of course it's like, actually it's, it's fine and actually important to be able to name what are the challenges you're facing. Is it a diagnosis? Is it your setting? Whatever, like name the factors, but name them so that you can start making changes. Okay, I'm in a community that doesn't resonate with me. Let's try out some new ones. You're anxious, okay, what do we wanna do about it? How do we wanna treat it? How do we wanna see a professional? How do we wanna connect with people over it? Take ownership instead of just leaning on it as an excuse to double down on why you're isolated. And it's easier said than done, but I felt that leaning on my excuses leaning on the reasons why I was lonely, the reasons why I was isolated. They were all true. And leaning on those reasons didn't make me any less lonely. I wish I had named them and taken more action, taken more ownership to go like, okay, I'm in a community that doesn't resonate with me. Let's try out some new ones. I'm gonna say this really quickly. <laughs> I'm gonna throw in some media, some mixed media that I swear to God, like got me through my 20s. First of all, there are two songs which I cannot play here because of copyright. Maybe I can play a little clip. Little clip. I'm in my 20s, so I panic in every way I'm. Little clip. It just takes some time, a little girl, in a little outdoor ride. Albert, the Albert, the will be just fine. That's good. Anytime I'm down, to this day, I listen to The Middle by Jimmy Eat World. It's gonna take some time. You're in the middle. Don't write yourself off yet. Et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Genius lyrics. I feel like they wrote the song just for me. I play that song anytime I'm really down, pretty much. You're just in the middle still. You're in the middle of the ride. Another more current song, which I did not have in my 20s because it came out more recently, but I still love it. It's called um, You've Got Your Whole Life Ahead of You. And it's such a great, it's such a great commentary on People always saying that to you. They're always like, you got your whole life out of you. Don't worry, you got your And it's like, okay, yeah, that's really helpful to nobody is kind of what the song is about. And it's a beautiful song. Love this song. I'll link both these songs. Very comforting. I'd say very comforting. <sighs> Being in your 20s, leaving college, or whatever world you're leaving, entering adulthood, it's a transitional phase. And transitional phases are usually pretty uncomfortable. There's a lot of unknown. There is a lot of fear. It's a transitional phase. And I will say this, most of life is transitional phases. We are in almost constant transition. There are moments of stability, there are moments of calm, and usually those moments of calm and stability <laughs> are immediately followed by an itch, immediately followed by a need for an unknown, something that thrills us. That's like what a midlife crisis is, right? Things have like settled too much. Everything is too routine. I go to the nine to five, I raise the kids, I go home, I go to sleep, I get up in the morning, I repeat. I need something new. It drives everyone crazy to not have some degree of unknown or challenge or newness, a little bit of fear 
is sexy. <laughs> it, can, it can go a long way. The time where there's something to lose, something to gain, we don't have it all right now. Those are the things we write movies about and write novels about. Those are the stories we tell. It is the good part. That's the movie part. You're in it. It's helped me a lot to try and just like focus on the possibility that that unknown, that to me is the feeling of being alive. And it is definitely accompanied by a lot of fear. But even just like putting that slight spin on it helps me wake up every day with like a little more excitement to accompany the fear. It's both. I do ask that everybody who's not in their 20s and who is tempted to leave a comment saying being in your 30s is hard, being in your 40s is hard, being in your 50s, being in your 70s is hard. I agree with you. I totally agree with you. And I'm going to say, let's let the 20 year olds have their moment. Please don't leave that comment on this video. Nobody's gonna like you. It's not a good way to make friends. I think part of part of the pain is like always telling someone that the hard thing you're going through is not as bad as the hard thing I'm going through. That's that's like a that's like a wildly that's a wildly unpleasant thing to say to somebody. And it really doesn't help. So 20-year-old viewers, you are in a tough time. I have been there. Talk to your parents, your older friends about what it was like for them because the stories I always heard is that it was unnerving and painful and terrifying for them too. Talk to the people you love, talk to the people you trust, find some mentors, people you can look up to to learn like their life lessons. They made it through and so will you. I promise you, it's gonna be okay. I get so subconscious of my hands as soon as I'm doing like my hands are on camera. I try to follow my nails and clip my cuticles and stuff for you guys because I do feel like it's gross to look at gross hands. I will say what though, you know what? I was, um, back when I was an actor, I had one single gig um, doing hand modeling. Wait for it. For a YouTube commercial. It was a commercial for YouTube Music. The YouTube Music app was coming out. And um, so it was like an ad for the app. So it's just like people's hands using a phone. And they needed like real people. They needed hand models, but they wanted like real people, real people hand models. Cause obviously I'm not a hand model. And I went into this audition. <laughs> the audition was like, I had to put my hands up on a board and like do movements with my hand. That was the audition, ace the audition. Uh, mostly because my hands are covered in like scars and tattoos. So that's, that's why I got it. Cause I have hands that look beat. I have looked everywhere for the ad. I've never seen the ad. I don't know where it went. I don't know if it went online. I don't know if it was for internal marketing. I don't know, but I was a hand model one time for YouTube years and years ago. It was probably like 2000, maybe like 2017, 16 maybe.